the Oklahoma City Thunder select Chet Holmgren, the center out of Gonzaga, to start the NBA draft at pick number two. Sam Presti's never missed inside the top 10, so you have to give him the benefit of the doubts. And while Chet Holmgren might have some weaknesses, his overall ceiling is that of a superstar. If Chet Holmgren hits his one-of-one ceiling, he will have revolutionized basketball. And in a small market, these are the kind of swings you have to take. So I respect Sam Presti's decision to go with Chet Holmgren here. I think that with Chet Holmgren, you're, of course, going to get that massive shot blocking, that rim protection, which the Thunder lacked last season around the rim. How does he fit next to SGA and Josh Giddy, your two cornerstones? I think perfectly. Not only can he space the floor, shooting 40% from three in his college career, but I think that he can take some burden off of them in the pick and roll, both as a ball handler in the pick and roll, but also as a roll man or a pot man in the pick and roll. And Josh Giddy's playmaking, dictating defenses in those settings, is going to be fun to watch. Plus, with SGA being so elite at driving downhill, finishing at the rim with a drive and kick attribute, as well, kicking out to Chet Holmgren uh, is going to be a fantastic option for the budding superstar. So with the Thunder pick here at two, yes, there are some risk. His frame is a risk. However, it might be a bit overblown. You don't want to go too far if you're Chet Holmgren in bulking up and adding unnecessary weight because it could result in injuries for the seven-footer. And I want to caution everyone as we sit here and excite over the second overall pick. I know there will be some people who provide pushback to that second overall pick saying, well, you know, look at Pokashevsky. These two players are entirely different. While Poku's really good on help defense, Poku shies away from contact, shies away from aggressiveness so far in his career. What Chet Holmgren is able to do, despite his frame, is absorb contact, bring it on, and get in the mix. He sticks his nose in everything on both ends of the floor. So I think that that is a great starting point for him to learn how to properly use his body and how to best how to maximize it at the NBA level. Speaking of maximization. I don't believe that Gonzaga maximized Chet Holmgren at Gonzaga. He was forced to conform to a system that didn't necessarily fit him playing next to Drew Timmy, who was a fantastic player in college and returned to school this offseason. I think that with Chet Holmgren, we didn't get to see him do a lot of stuff in the high post as a playmaker. And Mark Degnott loves to do that in OKC, especially whenever he had Al Horford. And this is an area that Chet Holmgren can really thrive in at the NBA setting, I believe. Plus, his interior scoring, of course, was taken away some by Drew Timmy. He can score down low. If he adds that mid-range jumper and, of course, his 40% from three, now you're looking at a three-level scorer who can pass at his size, who can ball handle at a plus attribute for his size. It's going to be fun to see how Chet Holmgren grows with Josh Giddy and Shea Giddis-Alexander, but this, if it all works out, will be your big three that takes you to the next step of this rebuild. Now, the Thunder still have a lot to do tonight. They still can trade up from 12. They can simply pick a good player at 12, plus whatever happens with pick 34. So the night is not done in OKC, but the biggest portion of it is getting the seven-footer in Chet Holmgren. I absolutely love what he brings to the table. While his frame might be an issue and his strength might be an issue, there aren't that many concerns to me besides his switchability. You can throw out the whole frame argument and strength argument because we already talked about how he kind of mitigates that risk a bit uh, in general. I think he can score inside at the NBA level. Now, defensively, I'm not worried about how he matches up with Joel Embiid. I'm not worried about how he matches up with Nikola Jovic or, or, or Nikola Jokic because nobody can match up with Nikola Jokic and nobody can match up with Joel Embiid. They are MVP Keller players for a reason. And those players of that ilk are hard to come by. And so I just worry defensively, not about how he defends down low against bigger bodies like that. I worry about his switching on the perimeter because we've seen in the postseason this year how you have to be able to switch at every point on defense. You have to be able to be put in situations where where you can go guard the perimeter because in the playoffs, as the game slows down and you get put into half court settings, they're going to hunt mismatches. They're going to hunt switches. They're going to hunt in the pick and roll. And so can Chet Holmgren handle being on the perimeter? I think that his frame and his length allows him to, uh, of course 
he will not be asked to go in isolation on Luca. But I think that if Luca got that switch and drove to the rim, his length can make up a lot of ground once he gets beat by some by a perimeter guard. I think that his length can allow him to alter shots and still block them from behind and still produce rim protection, even if he's beat on the first step towards the rack. So there's some question marks around Chet Holmgren. But as I mentioned before, if Chet Holmgren reaches his ceiling, and if you trust the Thunder to develop him to reach that ceiling, then he will revolutionize basketball. And he will change the way the game is played. And he will change this organization. And so while I had Jabari Smith number one and Paolo number two, I have to defer to Sam Presti, who has never missed inside the top 10 in any draft. When he's been given the opportunity to pick inside the top 10, he's always gotten it right. And so if Chet's my three and his one, I'll side with Sam Presti on this one. I'm excited to see how this pans out. We're going to hear from Sam Presti later tonight. I cannot wait to hear what he says about this election, but this is an exciting moment in Oklahoma City. After all the Jaden Ivey rumors and, and, and kind of the unknown, now we know. Pick number two is Chet Holmgren, but how does the draft finish? Can they trade up from 12? Can they get a Shaden Sharp? What's going to happen the rest of the way? We'll find out together and then react to it on tomorrow's podcast. So make sure that you subscribe to Locked on Thunder anywhere you get your podcast from, including on YouTube. And I am just excited to see how this all plays out. But as for Chet Holmgren, let me know what you think of this pick. Are you nervous about his ceiling and floor? Are you excited about this selection? And folks, we're only a few weeks away from Summer League. And the Thunder are participating in two Summer Leagues this year. So you can see Chet Holmgren in action in a couple of weeks playing next to Josh Giddy and playing next to Trey Mann, and playing next to Pokashevsky. Oh, it's going to be fun. And maybe, just maybe, the Thunder can win a championship in the Summer League. It'll be very exciting to see how it all pans out. But Poku is going to have another um, twin tower next to him in Chet Holmgren. I cannot wait to see how it all pans out today in OKC and and for the years to come in OKC. Uh, With OKC, though, I, I think that you're looking at a starter from day one. The Thunder have been able to... Um, the Thunder have been able to give their young guys a ton of reps and a ton of play from the word go, starting Josh Giddy last year from the preseason all the way through the end of the year until he suffered his injury after the All-Star break. So I think that Chet gets that same treatment, and he starts from day one and goes all the way through, especially because the center position is not being locked down by anybody yet. How, does the, how do you best maximize the lineup around him, though? How do you maximize... Chet Holmgren in his rookie year at center? Do you put Jeremiah Robinson at power forward next to him? Is it best to keep Baisley at power forward next to him? That's something that Mark wants to figure out throughout this offseason, but I cannot wait for all the different twists and turns that happen. The biggest point to end with, as we're all excited about Chet Holmgren and excited about Oklahoma City, this is not going to be a quick fix. The rebuild is not over. It's not done the Thunder are going to have to allow Chet Holmgren to go through ups and downs, to learn and go through the growing pains of an NBA season and try to adapt to NBA life. This is not going to be a type of player that just hits the ground running in the NBA, in my opinion. You're going to see him have flashes where he looks incredible and you get teases and glimpses of that ceiling. You're also going to have moments where he struggles And so allow Chet Holmgren to go through that without any extra pressure upon that. And this might be a guy that it takes two or three years to prove that he was the right pick, but I think eventually he will as long as he stays healthy and as long as he continues to develop at the pace he currently is. But it's an exciting day in OKC. Let me know how you think Chet Holmgren fits into the rebuild, how you think Chet Holmgren works alongside SGA and Josh Giddy on a scale of 1 to 10. How excited are you for this edition? And did the Thunder get the pick right at number two? We'll be back on Friday to break it all down, including thoughts from Sam Presley's press conference and what the Thunder did at picks 12 and 34, all coming up on the Lockdown Thunder podcast, on the Lockdown Podcast Network. It is your team's every single day. Make sure that you subscribe anywhere you get your podcast from I'm Ryland Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Ryland underscore Styles. That's at R Y L A N underscore S T I L E S for live updates. So you don't miss anything regarding the Thunder or the podcast. Make sure you go over there and do that as well. 
And until we know more about the draft cycle, make sure you're thundering up. Make sure you're excited for the future of the Thunder. And we're going to be here five days a week for the rest of the offseason and beyond talking Thunder basketball. So, folks, Chet Holmgren is a member of the Thunder. How do you feel? Let me know. Until next time, be good and be good to one another.